If you guys are interested in learning about handling objections, having charisma, and being able to calm people down, reframe high tension situations, um, this show is the one for you. And also we're gonna talk a lot about like identity, finding yourself, and a little bit on TC and lender leverage. This is The Agent Goldmine, where you'll find real talk, talk, and ambition. We're here to build real businesses and be more than your average agent. We want to know what the killers are actually doing within their businesses, the reality of it. All tactical, no fluff. So we're here to find out. Please share and enjoy. Welcome back to The Agent Goldmine, the world's best agent podcast ever in the universe and history of time. Today, we have, Elliot and I are interviewing our good friend, Kevin Schoen. He has last minute decided to jump on with us. He's like, uh, I mean, he was been in our books for a couple months down the road. We had a last minute, you know, drop out. And we're like, yo, Kevin. And you know what? The man is always game. This dude, if you guys are interested in learning about handling objections, having charisma, and being able to calm people down, reframe high tension situations, um, this show is the one for you. And also we're gonna talk a lot about like identity, finding yourself, and a little bit on TC and lender leverage for sure. And guys, we are starting to show out a little different than normal because it's so last minute, we don't have Kevin's bio ready. So we're gonna try this thing called a fire round. And what that means is I am going to ask the question and Kevin is gonna spit out the answer. So you're gonna get the same information as if we were normally introducing people, but in a super fun way. Kevin, are you ready? I'm ready. What market are you in? Uh, Bell County, Central Texas. Yeah, how many closings have you done? Over 60, over 60. <laughs> how long have you been an agent? Almost four years. Closings in the past year? Uh, 19 plus this year, uh, 15, the 15 this year. 15. 15. And also a little side note on Kevin, um, he capped super fast. Like I want to say in two months, you capped. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, most yes, dope. And also, okay, solo agent or on a team? Solo. Solo. Um, and that's all I'm going to do for the fire round. You did a great job. And Allie <laughs> is going to step Ooh. in now. <laughs> when I'm, cr I'm cracking up behind the scenes here. Oh, <laughs> Uh, six years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kevin, not only have you done, have you been an agent for six years, you have been in the military for close to freaking, oops, four years, my bad. Um, close to freaking 20 years in the military. And a lot of people hang their entire identity, especially I feel like the, as a longer and longer people stay in the military, that is their whole purpose. That is their whole identity. And they know nothing else other than I am a senior master sergeant or I am a captain and I'm a colonel and that's me, respect me. Anyway, how are you, <laughs> now that you're leaving and getting totally close- Totally relate to what you're saying. Right, like, okay, anyway. Um, now that you're leaving, what does that mental hurdle, mental block look like going from, you know, all, all of your years in, in, in the military to then becoming just like a regular agent? So- Great question. Thank you. Uh, I kind of feel like I saw behind the curtain years ago, right? Because I had a lot of my seniors, my peers uh, retire ahead of me because I promoted so fastly. I was or quickly. I was put in leadership positions like one above my pay grade a, a lot of times. Right. So that kind of put me in a senior bracket. Right. So my friends were kind of the seniors. So they were retiring before me. And I, I realized that I don't know, about five or six years ago when a sergeant major, a colonel, a first sergeant, you know, they were all kind of getting to that point in their career. And they all kind of had this dumb look on their face. Like, what do I do next? Oh, my God, I, I didn't prepare for this. You know, it's like, dude, you knew this day was coming for 20 years, right? Like, I understand if you don't have all the answers, but you didn't plan at all. Like, you didn't think about it at all. And in their defense, most traditional force comm units, at least like in the army, is like, you row hard every day, all day until you retire. Unless you have a really cool chain of command. It's like, hey, you've done 19 years. Like, go ahead and put yourself, you know, first for once in your, your life. Um, and a lot of times that doesn't happen. So anyways, I share all that to say that that's what motivated me to be forward thinking and start working on a career outside of the military. And real estate just so happened to be that career. How? Like, how? why real estate? I don't know, because I could do it on my time, you know, as we say, 
Um, but you know, my my grandparents they moved uh, to California from from Mexico, right? They they immigrated from Mexico to California, and you know, growing up, I saw my my grandmother and grandfather, you know, counting stacks of cash, right? In this like old school like roll up desk. I don't know if you guys ever saw those. Anyways, um, and I was I was always curious like where that money came from. And one day, my my uncle he took us. They owned like a cul de sac in East LA, right? A bunch of like in, Little little house in East LA, and you know we went to replace the toilet and do some stuff, and that's where I learned like the importance of real estate. Like owning assets can create money, right? So fast forward a couple of years, my mom got in real estate. Two thousand eight kind of didn't help her very much, so I learned the pros and cons of real estate, right? And then um, you know my buddy, he was in the Navy, he got his license, and he was like, Kevin, you need to get license, license. Finally, I got off my lazy butt and got licensed and the rest is history. And so you got licensed back in uh, what year? Because I'm trying to I'm trying to frame this about when I met you. 2021. I was in Alabama when I got licensed. 2021. But you were already or on 2020. This. I'm sorry. OK, 2020. You were already on this like self-development train because we first met at GrowthCon in 2019. That was in January, February of 2019. So early on. And you were there doing, you know, learning as much as you can about like finance and sales and the whole Grant Cardone show. So can you talk to us a little bit about your own personal development journey pre real estate? So, I mean, to that point, I've always been an entrepreneur, right? Like in high school, I was doing entrepreneur stuff. And I've kind of always, I've always looked for opportunities to make more money outside of my W-2 job. And at that point, we had what was called deadlift designs, where we designed weight belts and gym apparel. And that's that was the business that I was doing. I would go to CrossFit events and weightlifting competitions and hustle our our belts. And it was profitable. It was really good. Like we made a good amount of money, but it was a lot of work, a lot of like boxes in the garage. Like, do we have an extra large? I don't know. Where's the small? You know, so it was a lot of like all of these things. And that's what actually motivated me to go to 10X was to learn more about business. But as far as personal growth, uh, you know, I've lived a pretty colorful life. And, you know, once you kind of go through enough, you, you realize it's kind of important, needed, actually, to dive deep, on, you know, for yourself and uh, just try to be the best version of yourself that you can be, even though we're all equally messed up in our own way. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, OK, so when you first started real estate while being is still active duty. How how do, how were you getting clients? What were the what was those what were those conversations like? So you know I got licensed uh, twenty twenty one, and because I'm kind of a, a social butterfly, uh, most of my business came from you know just sphere, just organic sphere. You know I was in the army I don't know fifteen years at that point, fourteen years, and where I was at, I was stationed at Fort Rucker. Now it's Fort Nova Sol or something like that. It's like the aviation, Army Aviation Hub, right? So I'm aviation by trade. So at that point in my career, all of my, my peers were, you know, had enough rank to buy a house if they PCS to, to Rucker, right? So that was a natural, like, connection. Was, they would call me, Kev, hey, what's up, man? I want to move to Rucker. Can you help me buy a house? Absolutely. Let's go. Um, and then a lot of it was just people, I don't know, they just, they believed in me because they saw the hustle from, you know, going to the events, the, 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 CrossFit events, stuff like that. And they knew even if I was a new agent, uh, even if I didn't know the answer, they knew I was going to find find the answer and take care of them as best I could. I feel like there's so many people who are in the military and know all these people with VA loans and, you know, arguably also do CrossFit and whatever, but they struggle to convert. You know, they, they say, hey, I know all these people, but why does no one call me when they need to buy or sell. So can you talk through like what actions were you doing and why you? Well, I mean, I don't want to paint y'all a lie that like I just converted every lead that came my way because that did not happen. Um, but I, I, I like to think that I am a very real, transparent dude. And I feel if you can operate in that, that area, you're going to naturally bring in other people uh, who like you for you, right? No matter what you look like, what you do, if, if you're operating in an organic mode, it's very hard for people to like, I don't know, does he have bad interest? Is, you know, is he really a good guy? Like, 
you know, if, if you're forward facing with your, your branding, your mission, your goal, and you're vocalizing that to your audience, your audience is your Facebook community, right? Like your, your, fam, your family, your friends, your uncles, right? That's your audience. And if you're messaging that clearly to them, uh, they're going to start calling you. And that's, I didn't do anything super sexy or, or, or crazy. I just got my phone and said, hey, I'm licensed. Check out this house. And the rest is history. So it's not so much any secret one post that you have, you know, you just post literally you're yourself. Hey, I'm a, I'm a licensed agent. These are some houses, you know, and I know, and Shelby knows too, since we both follow you, you're also such a positive person. So it's more than just like, Hey, here's a house. You, you tend to tell stories too about like clients and how you helped or, you know, just, just, it's really easy to be able to listen to your listen to your Instagram stories, Facebook stories, and feel like I'm a part of that. Oh, I could see myself being a buyer and having you help me. I know exactly how he's going to treat me because it's how he treats everyone. Strangers on your birthday, you put a, an Instagram post. Uh, I think it was a story. Was it a story or post a real? It was a story. It was, it was a, story. a story. Yeah. And you were like, <laughs> um, you were like, Hey everyone, did you announce that it was your birthday? I think you did. Hey everyone, like today's my today's my birthday. And if you guys could do like one thing, one thing for me, just have a great day. And I was like, what? <laughs> like you are so giving, and that's you, you know? And so it it is social media, like when when you say it's like, hey, it's like just putting stuff out there, but it does, it, I it does go back to your authenticity, like who you are genuinely as a person, because not everyone is able to do that. You know, if I were to, you know, if anyone else were to do that, that's not like that. And that's the biggest, that could be the biggest turnoff. So however you represent yourself is how you should just like talk. I don't know. It sounds so simple, but also it's people don't follow that. It is, but it's it's hard, right? Because like, we're just, we're like, I don't know, everybody has an opinion and I, I want to make sure I'm messaging it correctly. And then it's like, Look, man, I, I have failed more times than I can count. And I feel like because of that, I like, don't get me wrong, I do care what they think, but I also don't care what they think because I know that if they got on the camera, they'd be stuttering just like me and misspelling their own name, just like I think I did when I logged in here. Like, I mean, we all make mistakes. And if we try to operate in this, this fallacy of perfection, um, we never get that forward momentum. So like, there's two things that come to mind after hearing you talk, Ali, is one is your vibe will attract your tribe, right? So like if you operate organically with who you are, you will get business with like-minded people and it makes it working with them very enjoyable because they're, they're connected to you on some level, right? Um, and then what is it? Uh, progress over perfection. That's like, I keep telling myself that because I'm, I'm still messing stuff up and I'm like, hey, like, hey at least you're, you're, you're moving the needle forward and that's all that matters. Okay, so we have, you know, a little bit of your backstory. We have your friend eventually convinced you to get your license. And now you have your license. So you're putting it out into the world and being authentic with who you are. And that is leading to over time being able to convert people within your sphere. And so can you take us through, is that how it continued up until now? Because I know with you getting out of the military in freaking 90 days, like I know you are doing a lot to build your business behind the scenes and really set yourself up to like, you know, catapult towards these next couple of years. And so can you take us through the evolution from that first year up until now? Thank you for listening. Out of respect for your time, we want to make this show as valuable as possible for you. So if you have any feedback on how we can improve, please let us know. DM us at Ali the Agent and The Shelby Show. So the first year, like, I, odds were in my favor, right? 2020, like, everybody got scared for a minute and then real estate just took off, right? So I had a huge upside market to my advantage. <clears throat> um, so, I mean, that was, it was kind of, it was too easy to to be successful in 2020. Um, it's just, you, you told a few people and next thing you know, you sold 10 houses, right? So that, I don't want to take full credit for that. Since then, I haven't really changed my, my, my business plan. I just try to stay relevant on social media within my organic sphere. Uh, to Ali's point, it's not all real estate. It's gotta be like the man behind the phone sometimes, right? You know, hey, I'm at a baseball game and just sharing 
life, right? Like I don't share everything personal. I, I like to keep some, some of my personal stuff personal, but mainly my kids and wife, like that's, you know, focus on, you know, me and real estate. Um, and that's really how I've gained most of my business, uh, you know, leveraging listings, right? Circle prospecting, knocking on doors and personally inviting them to the open house on fr- on Saturday or Friday, whatever day I do it. Uh, you know, I, I, if I have an open house, I don't do them all the time, but if I do, I go to the local print shop, I print off some sexy flyers and I, I hand them out. I personally, personally invite as many, you know, usually 50 to 100 doors I, I personally walk um, and invite them, right? And even if they don't show up, at least now I'm in their head and they have a flyer and I have had people call me and say, hey, come list my house. I remember when you were knocking on my door, I would like for you to sell my house. And it's just stuff like that, that, you know, it's, it's nothing super sexy. It's just doing the work, right? And, and putting some, some miles on your feet every now and then. Which is like, again, it, it's really, it's just going back to the basics, you know, like everyone wants like that secret sauce, the, the, the magic pill to, you know, have clients just come to them. And I, on the behind the scenes right now, I was looking at your Facebook, your Facebook and your Instagram, would you say that those are the two most common sources of social media that you use? Yes, I do use LinkedIn, but it's, uh, much more limited on the amount of stuff I put on there, which I, I honestly should be more uh, present on LinkedIn. Okay. Yeah. Because at, a lot of people, when they hear other agents getting business from social media, like Facebook and Instagram, they automatically assume that they need thousands of followers, friends on Facebook, thousands of of people um, following them on, on Instagram. And you really don't. It's all about the quality of your audience you know, um, not to downplay this at all, but you have a little over a thousand friends on Facebook. That's it. You know, like, and you're able to make a a heck ton of a living, you know, like you don't need thousands of strangers following you on, on social media. And you don't need, you don't need, I don't know. It's just, if people are always like, Oh my God, 10,000 subscribers on Instagram, she must make a killing. She might not, you know? Um, so just going back down to the quality. And, and a lot of a lot of a lot of these accounts, they they buy those 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 follows, right? And um I think Gary V, if you're familiar with that dude, he's like, I'd rather have a hundred like dedicated followers who know me, who support me, who believe in me, than ten thousand. Because you know, ten thousand fake followers doesn't doesn't mean anything. Um and I don't know, like don't get me wrong, I would like to grow my, my audience. So if you're listening to this, please give me a follow on Instagram, please. Yes, um, how can they but, follow you? Know, it's, it's more Kevin, what's your what's your Instagram handle? Um, Kevin.d.sean, S-H-O-U-N. It was Sean. <clears throat> Fuck. So Allie and I were debating. We were like, is it Sean? Is it Sean? And she's like, I think it's Sean. I was like, no. And it's... <laughs> it's all the above. Don't worry. Like, my nickname for a while was Show Enough. Like, that was... Uh, uh, so it's, of course it works. It was. Don't worry. Of course. I, I respond. I respond. And it's spelled, just so you guys know, Kevin is spelled normally dot D dot, and then Sean is S-H-O-U-N. Yes. Yes, it was. But I mean, as far as the 90 days out, like, you know, I am, uh, we were just talking about this earlier, was like, what got me here isn't going to get me there. So, you know, as as fun as the social media stuff is, like, I, I really need to build out the back end stuff, the CRM, the SOPs, all those things. So that way... You know, I don't have to be in the business every day. I can ideally hire someone to kind of do that back in for me um, more so than I already have. So I do have a TC. So if you are an active duty service member and you're slaying houses, it is super important for you to have a TC to to leverage that that busy work to someone else. So while you're doing army things or military things during the day, that paperwork is done for you and ready to go. And all you're needing to do is show houses, open doors. Go to closings, all of all of the things that help you create your business and get you paid. What do you say to the agent that says, I'm just not there yet in my business for a TC? Um, you never will be with that mindset. That was good. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> and so, Kevin, I know you and your TC have like a really strong working relationship. I'm curious about how you found her, how you built that relationship. Can you talk us about that? So if someone's listening, they don't have a TC and they want to follow in your footsteps. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, it was all relationships, right? So uh, at the time I was with KW and one of the, uh, like the finance person at at the KW office, uh, her and I just vibed very well. 
And she's like, Kev, I know you don't have a TC yet. Or actually I did, I had a TC, but she was still in Alabama, right? Cause I started there. She's like, I know there's some, some growing pains with that TC. I would love for you to at least give Sierra a, a try. And Sierra has hands down been a game changer. Um, she, she's a licensed agent. So that's very cool. I think, right. She knows the business way more than, uh, than a, a non-licensed TC. And then she's also able to do some stuff that non-licensed TC can't do. Right. So it just, it worked out very well. Um, again, we vibe right, right away and the rest. Yeah. Like I just, I, I couldn't be luckier to have met her and especially moving to Texas and home market, not knowing very many people. What does she do in your business? Cause sometimes TCs do different things. And for you and your personal relationship, what is she doing in your business? I mean, she does way more for me than I think she does anybody else. <laughs> um, and I know that because she's told me that. She's like, yeah, you're different. Like, I, I, I do a little extra for you. So I don't know if it's out of pity or out of, you know, like she <laughs> loves me, but I don't know yet. Probably pity. <laughs> Probably pity. <laughs> yeah, thank you for highlighting that. But, you know, really, you. The, the two things that I just make my life very easy is if I have a buyer, I say, hey, Sierra, I have a, I have a buyer. Can you send me a buyer? Can you? Right? And it's really just a hot sheet of their information, the property we're going to submit on, the list price, except just the basic like five W's, right? I send that back to her. She sends me back a completed contract. I review it real quick, sign, sign, sign. It gets sent out via DocuSign or whatever digital signing we're using. Um, and the listing is a little bit more labor intensive, uh, but I, you know, really the only thing I do is I line up the photographer, um, the cleaner if needed. And it's the same thing, just reversed, right? So we get all the information to her. She gives me back a listing agreement, sign, 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 send out. And then she uploads it to the, the MLS and all of the other things to make sure we get maximum uh, views on, on the property. Do, I think I may have missed this. Is Sierra licensed in Alabama? Uh, or She's licensed in Texas. So I started okay. in Alabama. Okay. I got my license in Alabama and then I moved to Texas, got my license in Texas. And that's where I met Sierra. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So, so basically... From the point that you have found a property for the buyer, or if you've established that there is going to, like, she does the paperwork on both sides, but does she also do, you know, on the buyer side, I assume she's like scheduling the home inspection and um, basically all of the details you jump back in for negotiations or when do you jump back in? Uh, really, it's, it's just the uh, repairs, right? If we're buying any, any repair negotiation for that. Um, but she schedules all of that stuff. Uh, I go over that repair sheet with the, with the buyer and say, Hey, look, you know, let's focus on, you know, well, first I ask them, Hey, look, what's most important to you out, out of this list. Right. Um, if there's, if they're minor items, I usually try to you know talk them off the ledge a little bit. Like, you know, look, we can ask for everything, but let's focus on the big ticket items over the little items, um, just to either a get them repaired before we move in or get them to come off the price a little bit. So you can you know, have them repaired the way you want. Um, did that answer your question? Yes, Kevin, that did answer my question. Thank you so much, Allie. When we're talking about uh, buyers, right? Well, yeah, let's continue talking about buyers, negotiations, talking people off of a ledge. Let's dive deeper into that. Um, I do want to first say thank you for dropping your golden nugget of the, because I know that you're an avid reader and like on negotiation books, like all the stuff. So for the listeners listening to this, go on theagentgoldmine.com. You can get his top three books that he recommends. Um, but talking about negotiations. So let how what is like a common negotiation technique that you're using with your clients because you're full of charisma? How do you help them with those that are a little bit more, say, high strung? <laughs> Yo, real quick, this podcast is not free. Cost of admission is sharing with a buddy who benefit or throwing it on your Instagram story. I guess we'll reshare that. I mean, it, it's it's just trying to control the controllables, right? I think it's it's not so much the the negotiating the the, the facts, it's it's managing emotions, which seems to be the best ROI that I've kind of worked with that I'm still working on is because sometimes you have a, a seller agent that's just always like uptight, man. It's like, you know, I'm not going to meet them with that same energy. I'm just going to be a very professional, courteous individual um, just because I know my time interacting with this person is very limited, 30 days plus or minus. So it's like, 
I don't want to waste my time, my emotions getting worked up, you know, equally with that other agent. Um, but as far as like the client perspective, I really do try to like put them first, right? Like, hey, look, what if it's important to you, it's important to me, right? However, let's let's uh, organize like if we're going to reference the the home repair stuff, right? Let's organize this stuff and like, you know, most important to least important. And then we can kind of figure out out of those things, what do we want to ask? We can ask for everything. You know, that's like twenty thousand dollars in repairs. Um or we can, you know, maybe get them to reduce price or whatever. It's just every client is different. Some clients want it done before they move in. And some clients don't care. They're like, hey, I'd rather take the money and do it myself. So it's just knowing your client is a really important aspect of managing that type of situation. I really like that you mentioned um, the the cross agent because that is a a, a lot of negotiations that people don't realize. They think that they're just, you know, trying to talk uh, like work with their client, but also like the biggest thing is working with the cross agent. So Kevin, I would love to role play <laughs> because oh, I, Lord. I yeah. Shelby's arms went the straight best. up. I didn't <laughs> sign up for this. Yes. Oh yes, you did. <laughs> oh. Okay. You're right. Oh, you were man. voluntold. Um, okay. You're right. You were so because... voluntold. <laughs> you're the buyer's agent. I am the crusty listing agent. I have been doing this for 55 years, Kevin. So how dare you? I just got the list of items to repair and I am offended. So say I give you a call. I want to know whether you even answer the call or, you know, just time. Like, do you text them back? Do you email them? Just your process. But I am calling you to pretty much chew you out because your list of items that you asked for, for the buyer, for the buyer to request of the seller no, that's not happening. Go. Um, so as far as answering the call, I'd, I'd probably answer the call <clears throat> because at this point, I I think I'd have a somewhat understanding of the, the cross agent. Um, so uh, okay. Susan calls say, me. Right? Yeah. Okay. okay. So you're I'm calling like, me very yep. upset. Um, you know, I, I guess go ahead. Call me. Kevin, this is, I, I just took a look at this list. My TC sent it to me and this is a lot that you are asking. I think actually, you know, it's a little bit ridiculous. The roof is not that old. The HVAC is not that old and we can find another buyer. Hey, hey, Susan. So thank you for the call. Um, to your point, yes, it is a lot that my client is asking for. Um, however, I just, you know, want to present it because it is important to my buyer. And at the end of the day, our goal is to, you know, get this deal to the finish line. But I do understand your frustrations with, you know, all of the requests that she wants fixed. But if we could, could we please just present it to your client and just see what they think and see if, uh, you know, they would be willing to repair some of the items. And if so, then we can negotiate from there. What do you think? Well, at this rate, I'm going to put the house as accepting backup offers. And I am going to talk the, to the other buyer's agents because I don't think that this is going to see the finish line. Okay. I mean, I... I don't fully understand why you feel that way. Um, you know, the house is relatively old. It's not a new build. The roof, you know, we can definitely have another roof and go out and check it out. But, you know, th these are things that are big ticket items that on the backside of a closing, if the roof does go bad, that's a $15,000 repair. And, you know, from a buyer's perspective, you know, that, that's, a, that's a costly expense just after paying, you know, three and a half percent for the closing. So, it, you know, it's just, it's all perspective. You know, your clients have been in the house close to 20 years. Um, we would love to get this deal to the finish line, but, you know, we don't know the answer unless we ask. So we just want to ask, and this is where she's at. I will manage my client's expectations as best I can. But, I, you know, as part of my fiduciary responsibility, I got to, you know, present what my client asked me to do. Okay, cool. So then we... Um, end scene. Very good job, Kevin. I love that. <laughs> Kevin because you know, survived. <laughs> we have all like, with those calls, right? <laughs> yeah, dude. But like, it happens so often, and it's so it's so common for these older agents to like bully, really like bully these newer agents because they've been in the business for so long. I mean, how dare you? Um, so at this point, what happens? We get off the phone. I'm gonna present it to to my seller. One because I. Do uh, but real also, quick. Can, oh yeah, can I recap real quick just to make sure? Based before we move to what's next, I want to recap some of the things that you, I think you did really well in that conversation. 
Um, I think that the right off the bat, a lot of people are um, instinctively defensive. And so they immediately are like not receptive to hearing what the other person or they're scared. But what you did really well is right off the bat, you said, thank you. You said, thank you so much, you know, and then you acknowledge, I totally see where you're coming from. And then right off the bat, you were reminded of the goal, which the shared goal is to get this deal to the finish line. So those three things, like, you know, if nothing else are so good listeners to put in your pocket, instead of getting defensive, thank the other person for their opinion, acknowledge that perspective and remind each other of the shared goal. Um, some other things that you said that I thought were really good is, is that, you know, you shared your buyer's perspective, because I think it's really easy for us as agents to get so caught up on our side that we forget that, oh my gosh, you're right. After this buyer, who's probably putting every penny of their savings on the line. And, and if they do that, then they're hit with another $15,000 potential repair you know, by sharing that and bringing that to light, I think that that was really powerful. So I didn't mean to cut you off, Allie. I just wanted to highlight those things. So thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Now we can talk about what, what happens uh, next, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fire so ring, yeah, go. perfect. What, <laughs> what happens after that? I guess I could share this story. Maybe? Please. I don't know. Uh, so one of the most unprofessional moments of my real estate career was I was doing a virtual showing, right? Um, for a house here in Colleen. And the prior agent had gone over time. So she got, she crept into my time, right? So I was like, hey, it's all good, no worries. I only need about 10 minutes. Anyways, as I'm showing this house, right? I walk back to the front <clears throat> to, because basically I turn on all the lights, right? Went back to the front, I'm recording this, this recording from my buyer. Um, actually, we're on the phone together. And then this agent comes up like, are you showing the house? Like, yeah, I'm doing a virtual showing. And then she's like, come on, come on. And she invites her clients to come in during my showing. And it was just this, like, I was so hot, dude. Like, oh, like this is my time. But my, you know, my, my clients on the phone, right? So I got to play cool, keep it cool. And I was like, man, like, you know, this is my time. I still have 10 minutes. Thank you. Um, and she's like, she care less, could care less. Um, man, that was a, I had to bite my tongue, man. Cause I, yeah, anyways. <laughs> Dude, that is tough. That is really tough. And, and um, yeah, I, I, and it, it is hard too when the client's watching because you're like, play cool, play cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's interesting anyway. too, because like knowing what I know about your background, I think you were, you used to be like pretty hot, you know, like headed possibly as a younger, younger, you know, and you've had a lot of- <laughs> No, you just used to be, you used evolution. to be pretty hot. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I had to say that. You used to be pretty hot. I didn't mean like hot, hot. I meant like, oh my God, Kevin. Also, side note, I remember when I first found out you were Hispanic and I was like, this <laughs> like this, this white dude, he's trying to tell me he's Hispanic. I did not believe it. That's anyway. Okay. I did all the time. It was like, oh yeah, I did an ancestry test too. It was like, no dummy. Like I grew up with, you know, Theos and, and my aunts all speaking Spanish at our, at our, at our family parties. But anyways. You know, Bringing it back to not your not hot either. appearance, but your yes, hot yes. head that you used to have. So, and which kind of, I think ties into like, I want to talk a little oh, bit a about I identity because you used to be a really hot head and you had like an ego, like most younger dudes and women do. Um, but you've evolved into the person that didn't chew out that agent while you were on the phone, which I think probably 20 years ago, maybe you would have. So can we talk a little bit about that type of maturity and transformation in your identity? Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, growing up, like, I don't know, I grew up, I don't know, <clears throat> in a very unique environment. Right. And there was definitely a lot of, a lot of fight, a lot of violence type, type stuff. It was very normal. And, you know, I remember like, like OG, right. Being, a, being an OG was like the thing to be and, um, keeping, keeping it, keeping it original, keeping it gangster, like being who you are. Right. Which is great, but you need to evolve. Right. And I remember, um, you know, I would hear things like, oh, you changed, bro. Cause like, you know, I joined the army and like, I did things and I go back home and like, oh, you changed. And I used to take that like really personally, like, man, like, did I change? Right. Like, who am I? And, you know, now I take that as a compliment, you know, like we must evolve, we must grow. 
from where we were to where we want to go. And, you know, I still struggle with anger, if I'm being honest. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, the more we can control our emotions and how we respond to the world around us has a huge impact on whether I go to jail or not. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's, that's kind of important, right? Like, cause my priorities have changed. Like I have a family that I love and I care. And like, I don't, you know, I want to be here. And I say that, that prison thing half jokingly, right? But there's a lot of people that make very bad decisions purely based off like stuff that's not even a big deal, like in the grand scheme of things, right? So, you know, just being aware of that and just, just growing through all of the, the struggles that we have in life, right? We all have struggles. I don't care who you are. Um, and just trying to take, take the positives out of those, you know, those not so ideal situations. I want to go into what's next for you. What are you, what are you currently working on in your business? Really, you know, I'm kind of ADD when it comes to that, right? Like I, there's all these things that I want to do, you know, and with the military ending, <clears throat> you know, my, my career ending, a part of me was like, it's ending, but it's also like, there's, it's also a beginning, right? So like, I have all of these opportunities now to, to really do whatever I want. And the easy button is real estate, right? It's something I'm naturally good at. I enjoy doing it. I, I love helping people, you know, own real estate, invest in real estate and collectively make money in the process. That's really cool. It aligns with where I'm at in life and who I want to be surrounded by. Um, I do have like this kind of, I don't know, chip on my shoulder to like be some type of, of coach or, or public speaker. Um, you know, I'm also like my worst critic. I'm like, you haven't done enough. You need to do more before you even consider doing that. Um, however, it's, it's something I would like to work on and just see, see what comes of it. I was talking about this. Um, I was interviewed on a, another podcast that like when, as you're, as people are shifting identities, I feel like people fall into one of two categories and that's either they need the mindset first and then they can take the action or they take the action and then the mindset or identity comes after. Like it, in that example was in the podcast that I was on was like investing. So like some people can just say, Hey, you know what? I'm an investor. And like they manifest it and then therefore they can go out and purchase properties and other people need to purchase properties before, like maybe even multiple before they realize and can tell themselves I'm an investor. Um, so I say that to, to like say with, actually that's a question with you and, and speaking, do you think that that is like, which one do you fall under? You think? Cause you definitely will be a Ted talk speaker. Like I know it. I know it. Um, it's just a Me matter too. of like, yeah, so, like you are yeah. a good That's freaking huge. speaker. You. you made me cry during retreat when you were talking to all of us in the, in the crew. Um, it like, it's powerful, man. Like you are so, so powerful. So I'm curious as to which one you fall under. Like, do you think that you have to consider like call yourself a speaker and then you take speaking gigs or speaking gigs first before you have to tell yourself that cause you are a speaker. So, you know, I mean, I, I kind of, forcibly became a public speaker because of the military, right? Like, you know, I mean, you probably, it's all perspective, right? Like if I'm in front of a formation, like they didn't pay to be there, but they're there and they're listening and I'm up front speaking. Right. And, you know, uh, I feel like I'm mostly good at keeping and drawing in an audience. Um, and, you know, I've had a few soldiers throughout my career kind of tell me the same thing. So like when it comes to, do I think that I'm a public speaker? Uh, yes, I would, I would say I've done it. Right. And kind of to your point, like, it seems like I, I have the ability to, to hit, you know, emotions, which is kind of important if you're a public speaker, right. You want to create that raw emotional environment, right. Good highs and lows and all the, all the things. Right. Um, and I definitely have a passion for it because I love seeing people be successful. I love seeing people like go from like doubting themselves to like, no, nah, I can do this. And I've seen it multiple times in my career from soldiers who at one point they're like, nah, you know, I don't deserve promotion or I don't do this. this and then we talk and we like, we kind of peel back some layers. And then next thing you know, they're, they're flying through the ranks and they're crushing their career. And it just, it energizes me. It's like, I, I think I was telling you somebody else, like selfishly, I do it for me, right? Cause I love how it makes me feel when I see people around me thriving, right? You know, like it, it makes me feel good. So 
for the public speaking thing, uh, I, it's just a matter of finding opportunities to do that. As far as like coaching, I don't know what that looks like. Um, I think it'd be really cool to create some type of community to where I'm talking with like veterans who are still in, or maybe they got out and they're trying to figure out, you know, what the, what does that next step look like? And I think there's a lot to be said about ve veterans. I mean, we're all veterans right here, right? We're all entrepreneurs and we're all finding purpose in our life and our mission through the things that bring us the most energy. And that's pretty cool. Apple listeners, this short pause is to ask you for a review. Here's how to do it. Back out of the specific episode, go to the page where you see all the episodes, scroll down, keep scrolling. Perfect. Now tap those five stars. Thank you so much. Back to the show. Dude, it's super cool. And I just got to say, you know, Ali mentioned how you spoke at retreat and at Pillars Retreat, it was our first ever this past November because historically we've done team trip, which is more of like a fun trip. But there was 25 of us there who flew in from all over the country. And I only asked two people <laughs> to speak. And, um, you know, my partner in crime, Michael Glasby, was the first. And then the second one was Kevin. And it's weird, Kevin, because I don't think I've ever actually heard you speak on like a stage before then. I just but there was something about the way you carry yourself and the way that I knew you would take it seriously. And Drake and I were talking about that afterwards too. It's like just how much you cared about um, the story you told and the way it was received and the feedback afterwards. And there was just, um, I, I'm just so grateful that you said yes to that opportunity. Well, op I think it was an opportunity. I think you crushed it. And um, thank you for being so vulnerable and open with your story. No, it's cool. I think, I think it's how you create connections, right? Just, just being, being real, being honest, being, being unapologetically you. And, you know, we all, at least for a lot, a lot of my life, <clears throat> business or otherwise, you know, I would always wait for someone else to do it first, right? Like, well, you, you say you love me and then I'll say I love you, right? Or something like that, right? Like who says I love you first relationship? Just be the dude, right? Just be the, 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 the dude that to just be, be the first one to light the candle. And before you know it, there's going to be another, other candles that get lit. And, you know, it, it can start with you just by having a simple conversation uh, about a life event that might not be a big deal to you, but it can resonate substantially with someone else and have a huge positive impact, which, I mean, thank you. Like, I, didn't, I wasn't expecting all of these accolades. So thank you all so much. I appreciate it. Kevin, what, what else did we not talk about yet that you'd like to cover before we head to our wrap up? I think we kind of talked about it. I just... You know, you got to be selfish sometimes in your life, right? You got to take care of yourself. Um, you know, in this industry, in a service-based industry, it gets very easy to get overwhelmed, at least for me. That's just me, maybe, um, because you're constantly serving all of the people around you. Like, just make sure you take time to, to do the things that serve you and bring energy to you so that way you can give your best to the world around you. Ugh, beautiful. Okay, Kevin, wrap up question number one. What is your favorite app or tool? And this can be life or business. Uh, lately, the Bible app. Uh, every morning I go to the gym, I sit in the sauna and I just listen to the Bible app. I think it's, it's been very good for me. Kevin, what events are you going to in 2024? Where can people find you? Um, so I will be going to Real Estate Rockstars in March, I think. Um, and then I will be going to the Tim... Was it Tim Ferriss? Not Tim Ferriss. Tom Tom Ferry. Tom Ferriss, yes, with y'all in Dallas. Both are in Texas, so that's lucky me. Um, but that, and that's probably it as far as events. Uh, I, I you know, I think it's very easy to get go to these events, you get all like, hyped up on Mountain Dew and then you don't do anything. But like, I just want to keep the two um, and hopefully grow my business uh, you know, in a predictable and sustainable way. Mm, perfect. Which leads us into our next question. How can listeners and us, how can we help you in your business? Uh, send me referrals would be super cool. Um, I'm in Central swear. Texas. Uh, yeah. So I, I live in Bell County, right? Which is basically Fort Hood, AKA Fort Cavazos, Colleen, Belton, Temple, Austin, like this, this greater Central Texas area. And uh, yeah, I mean, just give me a follow, man. You know, let me know what I can do to help you. Um, that's that's kind of the gift here is like, uh, just pay it forward, you know, just, just be a good person, pay it forward. And once again, where can people find you? Uh, so Instagram is probably the best one. <clears throat> That's Kevin, K-E-V-I-N dot D as in Delta dot Sean, S-H-O-U-N. 
Um, I'm on IG a lot of times and I, I'm pretty good about answering this. But yeah, that's, that's probably the best one. Sweet. Uh, everyone go give him a follow, even if it's just for the motivational. Like I listen to your motivational so good. I love it. I love it. And for the let's listeners, go. let's go. In case you have not already jumped on theagentgoldmine.com, that's where all the resources are for a whopping cost of free 99. You can also give us a follow, The Shelby Show, Ali the Agent. I don't know what um, I think you just did there. Okay, I just have to distract <laughs> myself, Kevin. <laughs> and <laughs> so hit us up with some feedback. Zero dollars. Zero dollars. Zero dollars. Zero dollars. And you know what else is free, actually? keep leaving people a review. So if you haven't yet, we really would appreciate a five-star review, but we're looking for feedback too. So leave that review. Even if you want to give us, give us a one star, we don't give a We want to hear from you. you know, we, want to, we want to make this podcast better for you. So that was so what's up? let us know what's up. I'm like, yeah, dude, wait, I, I give a f- <laughs> I'm like, can you but not? Give no, a f- give me a f- <laughs> star. Five Shelby star. Gives a star. I'm looking for comments on how to improve. Wow. <laughs> Don't worry, we got Dude, this. Dude, if you no got a comment, gonna give... DM me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Send, send Ali the DMs of all negative stuff, but leave five-star reviews for the, the, the podcast. 100 Kevin's got it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Listeners out there. Actually, you know what? The, the reason I said that is because I think it really is just based off of um, amount, quantity. For for five, oh, really? three, one star, it really is just quantity. <clears throat> so. Oh, the- yeah. Are we testing that theory with ourselves? Should we test it with? <laughs> We've got to wrap it up. Okay. If anyone else is still here, be a bro and share this show. The sh- Bye. The sh- Go. That's all I had. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> Awkward <laughs> question. <laughs> I'm going to mark this clip. Now. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Shelby. Uh, <clears throat> did I ask you a question? I think Ali had a... Ali, did you have a question? Well, okay. I was going to respond, but then when you were like, hey, did that answer your question? I didn't feel right saying yes, because it wasn't my question. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. 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 Let me mark, let me mark. Here we go. Um, yes, Kevin, that did answer my question. Thank you so much, Ali. And the reason why there's that, there's like a slight lag and then Allie's like trying to unmute her thing. And so it's not you, it's us. Your app is very cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay, I'm just gonna keep myself on, like, anyway. Thanks so much for listening, dude. If you want the golden nugget that this guest provided, see the show notes or just go straight to theagentgoldmine.com. That's where we keep all our resources for you. Till next time.